Hey everybody, welcome to the video. It's going to be the 9-game MLB DFS slate for today on DraftKings. But before we continue, as always, if you guys could just leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, you might as well hit that subscribe button. I know we're all season long trying to help you guys become better MLB DFS players. And I cover other sports as well. So if you're going to keep coming back to the channel each and every single day or each and every single week, you might as well hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out whenever I post new content. And if you don't follow me over on social media, I'm at ChrisPinnell16 over on Twitter, CPen16 over on IG, and if you want some more content over on Patreon, always much appreciated. You can join a community of 300 plus people, hop into the Discord chat, come in and ask me all the questions you want, or just come in, hang out, and discuss the upcoming slate and watch the games. And you get access to all the extra content that I put out as well, the cheat sheet with all the notes on each and every single guy that I'm interested, the top stacks, and all that fun stuff. It's all available in the link in the description below if you're interested. If not... Hey, that's fine. Let's just dive into today's slate. So, uh, first thoughts on this slate is that pitching is loaded. It is absolutely loaded. I'm not sure if we're going to spend up for two of these guys, but I think you want for sure one in your lineup in cash games. I mean, you have three of some of the best pitchers in the in the NL. I mean, look, you Darvish has been fantastic. Would not surprise me if he won the NL Cy Young. Then you have Trevor Bauer, who's also been having a fantastic season. Clayton Kershaw has been having a fantastic season, as has Zach Davies, and Dane Dunning's been pretty good so far in his uh, short major league career so far. But we have three really good aces up top, and I think you're kind of splitting hairs here. But we'll start up top with you, Darvish, 11,500. He has been awesome this season. He was shaking in his first start, but after that, he's pretty much been lights out. And he was actually working on a no-hit bid in his last start versus the Cardinals. You know, he went seven innings, allowed one hit, and it was a home run. But 11 strikeouts, and he was just, he's just been so good since that first start where he scored eight points. But after that, 29, 22, 37, 24, 33, 28, and then his best start of the season, 39.2 fantasy points. I think we're probably looking at 25-plus points here easily for you, Darvish. And also something to keep in mind is that the wind is blowing in pretty hard in Wrigley tonight. At least it's projected to as of right now at 12 in the morning, The well, I guess the day of, but you know what I mean, the night prior of the slate. Right now, heavy winds blowing in. If you guys don't know how Wrigley Field work, works when the wind is blowing in, huge boost to pitching when it's blowing out, huge boost to the offenses. And Right now, 15 mile per hour wind that uh, blowing in, that's going to be a huge boost for these pitchers, and these guys don't even need boost, so just makes them even better plays. But yeah, like you, Darvish, quite a bit here. Now, there's no team totals out yet for a lot of the games, so I'm kind of just going to have to do some guesswork on teams that are going to have higher totals and lower totals. But, I mean, this should be a very, very low total game. You have two of the best pitchers, and you know, not two of the best pitchers, but two of some of the best pitchers in baseball facing off, and... With the wind blowing in, this is probably going to be like a 7 over under, for being honest. I, I, would hope, I would not hope, but I would imagine both teams are going to be around 3.5 implied team total or less. So definitely both guys here, but if you're looking at Yu Darvish's numbers this season, an elite 2.6 XFIP, a 33% carry, not walking anybody, only a 4% walk rate, and around a half a home run per nine innings given up. So definitely like Yu Darvish here. Matchup versus the Reds, I guess, isn't great, but, I mean, it's you, Darvish. I really don't care what the matchup is. He can just completely mow down any single lineup. So he's expensive, but he is our ace, number one ace of the slate. I mean, honestly, these guys are kind of like 1A, 1B, and 1C, to be honest. You're kind of splitting hairs. But anyway, dropping down to Trevor Bauer, 10,900. Like I said, the wind is blowing in, making these guys even better plays than they already are, just if there was no wind aid here. But yeah, Trevor Bauer, he's having a great season as well, a nice 205 ERA. Now, the XFIP's at 3.31, but that is still a very, very strong number, a 36% K rate. Giving up a lot of fly balls, though, and over a home run per nine innings, but really not giving up much hard contact in the slightest at only 30%. And if we're looking at his game log this season, uh, it's kind of tapered off the past three starts, but when he started the year, he was at 36, 36, 36 again, then 40, and then it kind of tapered, tapered off a little bit. Like I said, 16 points, 12 points, and 20 points, but he's a guy that's got a long leash each and every single start. He's only been less than 100 pitches in one start this season versus the Royals when he scored 40 fantasy points, but I believe that's when it was, that was when it was a double header, so his start got cut short. So he would have been well over 100 pitches in that one as well. But Trevor Bauer, liking him quite a bit here. Like I said, the wind is blowing in. And the Cubs are a team that are striking out quite a bit this season versus right-handed pitching. 
27.8% carry to the righties this year. Now, obviously, they've got some power, a 111 WRC+, plus, 338 WOBA, 226 ISO, but the wind blowing in should negate some home runs getting out of there. A lot of these balls that could end up being home runs are probably going to get knocked down and be easy flyouts. And they're striking out quite a bit, and Trevor Bauer's been striking out most of the guys he faces so far this season anyway. So, love Trevor Bauer. These guys are all elite options. And then if you can't get up to those two guys, you get a nice consolation consolation prize in Clayton Kershaw here, who's also having a fantastic season. He's got a very shiny 1.5 ERA with a 2.6 XFIP, 31% K rate, Giving him a lot of hard contact, though, at 47%, but he's getting a lot of ground balls and 1.25 home runs per nine innings. I think he's a fine option here, and the Diamondbacks have been horrendous versus left-handed pitching so far this year. Not striking out a lot, but only a 6% walk rate, less than a 100 ISO, which is very, very low. 67 WRC+, plus and a 272 Woba. And in Kershaw's two starts versus the Diamondbacks this season, he scored 27 points, striking out six. And then most recently on September 3rd, he scored 31 fantasy points, striking out eight. And he was also around 100 pitches in his last start as well. Now, the only downside with Kershaw here is that this is not the greatest pitcher's park in the world. We saw that last night if you're watching the game. Gavin Lux hit a homer, which I think probably is going to be a fly out in most ballparks. But the, you know, it's just very hot in Arizona and the way that stadium works. Kind of carried it just a little bit. I think got a little bit lucky there with that home run. And then we saw that with whoever it was that hit a home run off of Walker Bueller. I can't remember if it was Cole Calhoun or not, but the ball did carry a bit, and it certainly aided that as well. So that's the only concern, but I'm not really expecting Kershaw to serve up too many too many hard-hit balls uh, to uh, Arizona here because they've just been very weak versus left-handed pitch in the season and virtually had very, very, very little power whatsoever. So I think Kershaw is fine if you can get up to the big dogs in Trevor Bauer and Yu Darvish. And you can save $1,000 off of Darvish and $400 from Tevor Bauer. But really, you're splitting hairs here. Each one is a fine option. And then if you kind of want to get different, I think most people go with either these first three guys and they pair them with Dane Dunning on this slate. It's only 6500 because that's going to allow you to fit your bats in. But if you want to fade the top guys, which I really wouldn't recommend, but if you want to, Zach Davies at 8700 is interesting. We know how, Rockies, how bad the Rockies are on the road. And Zach Davies has actually been pretty darn good this season. If we're going to look at his game log, he's got a 2.23 ERA in the season. But looking at his starts, he's had one bad game, and that was in Coors Field where he scored six points. And that's it. That's his only bad game. He scored 18, 27, 18, 18, 28, 24, and 25. And he actually just played the Rockies August 28th in Coors Field, and he scored 24 points. Now he's going to be at home. And I believe the Rockies are going to have a team total probably in the low threes if we're being honest. So I think Zach Davies is okay here. Now his XFIP's about nearly two runs higher than his ERA, which means he's getting a little bit lucky. But, I mean, I believe last season, too, he was a guy that just kept getting lucky. So maybe he's just one of those guys that's going to keep getting lucky. But he doesn't usually get blown up, and he really hasn't so far this season. Only one bad start, 23% K rate. I mean, numbers aren't great, but he's just getting the job done. He draws this half matchup here, and I'd imagine the Padres should be able to give him the win. So I think Zach Davies is fine. And if you're looking at the Rockies WRC Plus versus righties this season, it's only 79. And I like to use WRC Plus because it kind of accounts for ballparks as well. So obviously, since they're in course field, that's something good to look at for the Rockies. But yeah, Davies is a fine pivot in SP1, but... For the most part, I'd really try to get to three of the aces here just because their upside's, you know, 30-plus points. And then SP2, I think, is a logical uh, spot today. Or, I think uh, Dane Dunning checks in as the logical SP2 today because I think we're going to be spending up at SP1 for sure. And we're going to want some nice bats, and then we can't really pay up for both or for two of these three guys. So I think we're going to drop down to the Dane Dunning tier at 6,500, but... You know, DraftKings just kind of refuses to price him up in the 7K range. Now, I know in his last start, he wasn't that sharp, and it was easily his worst outing of the short career he's had so far, but I still think he's just still fairly priced. Let me pull up his game log really quick. So he's made three major league starts. He scored 14 points in his first one versus Detroit, 24 in his second one versus KC. Then he faced KC again and scored 7.1 points. But we saw his pitch count all the way up to nearly 90, which was encouraging to see because before that, he was maxed out at 79. So he got up to 88, wasn't as efficient. But the guy's got good stuff. He was a top prospect for him. And look, I like the matchup here versus the Pirates. It's basically just a price and matchup play for the most part. The Pirates are just not a good team versus right-handed pitching this season. I mean, if you're looking at their numbers, they're just dreadful. A 53 WRC+. plus has actually gotten worse since the last time I've had a pitcher... Uh, 
had a picture on the uh, YouTube spreadsheet for looking at their splits versus righties, but that has gone down. I believe it was 61 a while ago for the WRC Plus. Now it's down to 53. Uh, only a 200 batting average, a 6% walk rate, 25% K rate, and a 112 team ISO. So certainly like Dan Dunning here, he's cheap. He's a pretty solid pitcher looking at his numbers this season so far. A 3.12 XFIP, a 31% K rate. Getting a lot of ground balls as well. Not much hard contact or home runs either. So I know it's a small sample size. But then Dunning's good, and I think he's better than 6,500. I wish he was still down in that 5K range, and I remember when he was 4,500. But he's still fine at 6,500 in an elite matchup here. He's also in a pretty good pitcher's park as well in Pittsburgh. And if you pair him with an ace, it makes it kind of easy to build your lineups tonight. So then we're going to move on to the bats at this point. Now, it's I don't like doing this when there's not a lot of Vegas totals out yet, but I'm going to try to do some assumptions here on Vegas totals for teams I think are going to have decently high ones. But we'll start with catcher, and i got to be honest, catcher sucks today. There wasn't really anybody that stood out. Like, I'd like to play Will Smith, but every time Kershaw pitches, Austin Barnes is the catcher. So I'm assuming Barnes is going to be the catcher. If it happened to be Will Smith for some reason, I think he's probably the top catching option today because he absolutely crushes right-handed pitching. But I'm pretty sure it will end up being Barnes, even though Will Smith got the day off tonight or last night, I guess, whenever you're watching this. Although I'm posting this in the morning. So, yeah, last night he got the day off, which didn't really make much sense to me. But either way, I mean, you pretty much just fit in whoever fits for the most part. Joey Bart at 3,500 going against Nick Marjavicious. I think he's... Okay, I mean, if you're looking at margin of vicious splits this season, or even the past two seasons, about a, about a 300 woba to lefties, so about a, a little bit over a 300 woba to righties. I mean, either side of the plate's kind of been neutral for the most part, but I mean, Joey Bart at 3,500. If he fits your lineup, it's kind of whatever. I'm not in love with any of these catchers by any means, but Bart's an okay at 3,500. Austin Barnes at 3,400, assuming he's going to be start because he's going to be catching Kershaw. I think he's fine just because you're going to want to get exposure to the Dodgers on this slate. Now, again, I have no team totals out yet, but I'd have to imagine they're going to be close to six as they are most slates. And Tyler Clark's not a really guy that I'm going to be too scared of by any means. Now, if you're looking at splits this season, he's actually got over a 30% carry at the righties and a 20% K rate to lefties. But again, it's the Dodgers. They absolutely smash right handed pitching. I just don't really think he's that great of a pitcher. And once again, I think a full stack is in order here for the Dodgers, especially if the roof's open in Arizona. Definitely a boost for the bats. Then Dalton Varsho, 2,200. Did he, was he one of the guys that homered off of Walker Bueller last night? I think it was Bueller and what, Calhoun? I think so. That was really loud. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, Varsho, he's just dirt cheap. Now, I don't love using anybody versus Kershaw, but the Diamondbacks are pretty cheap. And uh, 2,200, I think he's fine. He's actually been doing well. He hasn't played too much this season, but he's near the bare minimum, and you get a cheap righty on lefty matchup. If you're going to use anybody versus Kershaw, you'd want the right-handed side of the plate. Or, yeah, well, I guess technically it would be the left, but you guys know what I mean. Like righties versus Kershaw, better if anything, but I really don't want to use anybody versus Kershaw. Drop it out of first base, which is a much more fun position. I could have had quite a few more guys here, but I don't want to list everybody on the slate. So if I missed your guy... I probably still like him. I just want to list the entire slate. But Cody Bellinger, super expensive at 6,200. But he's great versus right-handed pitching. And if I'm going to use, I mean, I was going to say if I'm going to use anybody versus Taylor Clark, which I kind of want to use everybody. But I do prefer the lefties. But if you're a right-handed bat of the Dodgers, you're still a fine option tonight. But I do prefer the lefties overall. And Cody Bellinger, he's great versus right-handed pitching. So I think he's a fine option. I don't really got to go too in-depth in there. And I think the Dodgers are going to end up being one of the top stacks on the slate. And I'd have to assume their Vegas total is going to be around six. Pete Alonso, 4,400. I think the Mets are going to end up being a pretty good stack on the slate. Going against Jorge Lopez, who's just not a very good pitcher. Uh, recently, a new addition to the Orioles. He was previously on the Royals. And he was certainly a guy I, like to, I, like, I used to like to pick on in the past. Now, Pete Alonso, he's not having the season he had last year. Last year, I mean, he was just crushing baseballs left and right. But he's still viable viable here, especially for just stacking up the Mets. I wouldn't say he's my favorite one-off for cash games by any means, but he's fine in Full Mets stacks for the most part. Now, he's been better versus lefties this year versus righties. I mean, pretty poor, to be honest. Less than a 200 ISO, less than a 4 in slugging, and a near 200 batting average and a 25% K rate. But he's got power, and Jorge Lopez just really isn't the guy to be scared of. If you're looking at his numbers on the season, 11% K rate to righties, 24% to lefties. But I think that number's going to come down, and he's just not a very good pitcher in these slightest. Prefer the lefties here versus Lopez, but either side of the plate here is in play for play for him. I'd have to imagine the Mets probably going to have a team total above five on this slate. Mitch Moreland, 3,800. He had bases loaded last night in the first inning with no outs, and he looked absolutely lost at the plate. I think he went 
he whiffed three times. He had him two well. Then he, I want to say he had three straight whiffs. I mean, it was just horrendous. I mean, I was think I had him in my lineup too. I was like, all right, I'm gonna get myself a grand slam. Nope, I believe Will Myers got the grand slam. <laughs> anyway, I think Marlon's fine. He's been crushing right-handed pitching this season. Now, I will say he's struggled a ton on the Padres so far. I want to say he's, what, 3 for 20, 21, 3 for 22. It's been a struggle for Mitch Moreland. But overall this year, he has been crushing righties with over a 400 ISO, a 721 slugging, over a 300 batting average. Now, Santatella, he's on a bad pitcher. I'd say he's around average, but if you're going to use anybody versus him, I like the lefties, although you can full stack the Padres just because of the Padres. Just because I prefer lefties versus him does not mean you cannot play Machado or Tatis. They are still elite options. Overall, I just prefer left-handed bats versus Sensatella because the guy's got an extremely high ground ball rate to righties and doesn't really give up many fly balls in the slightest. If you're looking at Sensatella's splits, to the righties, he's got a 60% ground ball rate and only an 11% fly ball rate and only walks 3% of the guys and also an 18% K rate. But if you're looking at the lefties, numbers get a little bit better. Only a 48% ground ball rate, over a 20% fly ball rate, and only a 13% K rate. So I like the lefties here more, but again, the Padres have elite hitters in Tatis and Machado, which they're pretty much matchup proof for the most part. But I do like Mitch Moreland at 3,800. Uh, going down to second base, we have Robinson Cano at 4,400. He has been crushing right-handed pitching, and I definitely like stacking up the Mets versus Jorge Lopez. Now, I would, I wish they were in Baltimore because it's a better hitter's park than it is in New York, but still, it's going to be fine. And the Orioles did score, what, like 11 or 12 runs last night, so I think they'll be okay. And Cano, if you're looking at his splits versus righties, a near 400 batting average versus them this season, less than a 10% K rate. 188 WRC plus and just elite numbers all around. So I think Robinson Cano is fine, a bit expensive, but I think he's okay. I'd probably rather play Jeff McNeil for being honest at only 3,500, but Cano, he's fine. He's going to be hitting there a little bit higher in the order as well. Jake Cronenworth, 4,000, did not make the lineup last night, but assuming he is back in, he's a fine option here. Is he is a lefty versus Sensatella, and Cronenworth has been awesome versus random pitching this season over a 300 ISO. Over a 330 batting average, 173 WRC plus, and very good numbers all around. So Cronenworth, certainly viable, and he's actually a at a fair price for being a Padres because a Padres bat because you know Tatis and Machado are always priced to the moon, as is Austin Nola. So you can actually get him at a decent price tag as well as Mitch Moreland. And then going down to Jeff McNeil, 3,500. He homered in the ninth inning last night, and he was very popular. So if you were on Jeff McNeil, I'm sure you were pretty happy late in the game, but. He's a fine option here. Now, versus lefties, he leads off. And then versus righties, he usually goes way down in the order, which he's actually better versus righties. But I also understand that Brandon Nemo, and Michael Conforto are going to have to get bumped up in the order and some other guys. So that's just going to has to work for Jeff McNeil. But he's fine. He's not a guy that has a ton of power. But he's been hitting the ball well recently. Doesn't really strike out a lot. And has a near 300 batting average, two righties this season. So he is certainly viable at only 3,500. Dropping down to third base, we have Max Muncy, 5,800. Pretty much like all the Dodgers here versus Taylor Clark. Just not a really a pitcher that I'm going to be too scared of. And Muncy's got power to both sides of the plate. And I'm going to assume they're going to have the highest team total on the slate as of right now. If it's not the highest, it's probably going to be close to it. But definitely like the Dodgers and Manny Machado, 5,600. I prefer lefties versus Sensatella, and I prefer Machado versus uh, lefties. So it's kind of like a double negative there. But the Potters have just been so good this season, and their offense is just absolutely insane. you got Trent Grisham, Tatis, Machado, and not Hosmer currently, but then Mitch Moreland, Austin Nola, Will Myers. It's just absolutely loaded. And then throw on Cronenworth and a couple of the other guys just for fun. And it's just one of the most dangerous lineups in baseball, and if they can get the sense teller early, they'll be able to pick on the Rockies' bullpen. So definitely have some interest in Machado if you're stacking up the Padres. J.D. Davis, 4,100. Prefer him versus lefties, but he should should still get a good spot in the order, and he's been fine versus either side of the plate. Obviously, much better numbers versus lefties, but I still think he's playable versus right-handed pitching. I do like all the Mets on this slate for the most part. Then going on to shortstop, once again, I really didn't like any of the cheap options at all, so I think you're probably going to try to spin up for Tatis and or, and, not and or, but or Corey Seager on this slate. Now, they're pretty closely priced. I'm probably going to side with Corey Seager just because I'm, I don't know, I've just been playing Corey Seager a lot this season, so I don't know, I just got, I guess I just have a soft spot for him, but he's crushing right-handed pitching. But Tatis, he's fine too, one of the best hitters in baseball. He's been crushing right-handed pitching this season. If you're stacking up the Padres, 
use Tatis. If you're stacking up the Dodgers, you use Corey Seager. It's kind of simple as that. If you had to pick one for cash games, I'll probably go Corey Seager just because I like the lefty-on-righty matchup here better than Tatis and the righty-on-righty matchup versus Sensatella with this high ground ball rate. But if you're looking at Seager's splits versus righties this season, they've been fantastic. A 340 ISO, 713 slugging, a 372 batting average, just really good numbers overall. So Corey Seager, he's obviously an elite option, but I don't really like any of the value here, so you're probably going to try to spend up at shortstop. But there might be a decent value option that pops up later in the day. Like yesterday, I kind of liked uh, Jazz. I forgot to say his last name. But on the Marlins, I thought he was a fine value shortstop. And he actually had some decent ownership. I ended up paying up for Seager. I'm not sure what he's doing right now. Hopefully, he, didn't, he hasn't really been doing too much, I don't think. But maybe he did something late. But yeah, Corey Seager, Fernando Tatis, elite options. Now, dropping down to the outfield. It's a loaded outfield today. Kind of had to try to cut it down a little bit. But there's a lot of good spend-up options. Some good options in the middle. And plenty of good punt options. I don't really think spending up a pitcher is going to be too much of an issue today or spending up in the infield with guys like Seager and Tatis. So I think you can pretty much do whatever you want in this slate. But start with Mookie Betts, 6,000. He's been crushing right-handed pitching. The splits versus lefties have been awful this year. But versus righties, he's got a 400 ISO, a 209 WRC+, and just really, really good numbers all around. So if you're stacking up the Dodgers and you got the money for Mookie Betts, obviously he's an elite option. Mike Trout, 5,900. Anytime he's going up against a righty, he is in play, especially a below average one in Kyle Cody here. Not a huge sample size on Cody, but I don't really think we need to look at his splits. It just doesn't really matter. Mike Trout going up against, an, against a righty. I mean, always he can be one of the top plays on the slate. Last season, he absolutely crushed righties, and that's holding true once again this year. Over a 450 ISO to righties, 442 on base percentage, a 205 WRC+, 40% fly ball rate. I mean, like, it's Mike Trout. You guys don't need me to tell you that Mike Trout's a good play. And I actually do like this Angels and Rangers game for bats. They're all, I mean, Mike Trout's not fairly priced, neither is Anthony Rendon, but it's not that hard to stack that game up. And you got two pretty average to below average pitchers on the mound. And I'd, I think their totals are probably going to be close to five. So I think you can definitely find some decent value in this game. I mean, the Texas Rangers are super cheap. Now, I know they suck, but they're also going against Julio Teheran, which is not a very good pitcher. So he kind of sucks as well. So. I definitely like the value over on the Rangers, even though I have not mentioned many of these guys. And then going down to Michael Conforto, 4,800. Always like him versus right-handed pitching. If you're looking at his numbers this year, he's actually been a little bit better versus the lefties. But over the course of his career, he's always been better versus righties. And if you're looking at uh, some of these numbers, actually slightly better versus righties. But he's had more power versus the lefties this season. But a 352 batting average to righties over a 400 Woba, 382 on base percentage. Going up against Jorge Lopez. I think Kofor is a fine play, especially if you're stacking up the Mets. Trent Grisham, 4,700. Padres been absolutely off last night. Not saying they're going to do that again, but he's a lefty versus Sensatella. And like I said, I prefer the lefties versus Sensatella. Shohei Otani, 4,300. Mentioned I like this game stack. Like, you can stack the Rangers, you can stack the Angels as well. But Otani versus the righty is certainly viable here for looking at his splits versus righties this season. Have not been fantastic, but last year he was great versus righties, and he still had some pop versus them this year. A 230 ISO, so I think Otani's fine at only 4,300. Also eligible at first base as well. And another guy that's also eligible at first base is Dominic Smith at 4,200, but he's been fantastic versus right-handed pitching this season with a 346 ISO, 670 slugging, and a 333 batting average. And like I said, I think we can use all the Mets here versus Jorge Lopez, so... Dominic Smith is fine. Brandon Nimmo leading off for the Mets. Pretty much, I can't say anything that I haven't said already for the Mets, but he too is also pretty good versus right-handed pitching with a near 300 batting average. He gets on base a lot with a 20% walk rate. He's fine at only 4,000. Then getting down to the cheapies here, we have Shinsu Chu at 2,600. Now, it's no denying that the Rangers offense has been awful this season. They have. But he's fine at 2600 He just seems a bit too cheap here. He's got a 400 on base percentage this season. That's pretty much the only thing he's got going for him. All the other numbers suck. A 30% K rate, less than a 200 ISO. But he's only 2600 Julio Teheran is not a guy that I'm really going to be too scared of if you're looking at his numbers this season. Over a 400 Wobit to left-handed bats. You could also throw in Joey Gallo here. It's just, I don't know, he's kind of sucked this season, which all the Rangers have. But Joey Gallo is playable too, and you can certainly stack up the Rangers. I think he's only 3,800 too, but Shin Su Chu, 2,600, I think he's fine. Justin Upton, 2,600. He's actually kind of been on fire recently, and he's actually had more pop versus the lefties this year, which was not true last year or the beginning of this season, but he's been doing fine. He's only 2,600, and I think you can certainly stack up the Angels on the slate. You can certainly stack up the Rangers. A full game stack is certainly viable here. 
And, you know, Justin Upton, 2,600. He's been hitting the ball well recently. He's fine. Then Tavares here at 2,100 should be leading off here versus Luis Heron. If you're looking at his splits this season, it's pretty ugly. But if he is in the leadoff spot at 2,100 versus Julio Tejeron, a guy that's not very good versus left-handed bats, he is certainly going to be viable. Then DJ Stewart, 2,000, the bare minimum. I said I liked him last night. He actually ended up homering, and the Orioles did very, very well. But he gets another righty on the mound here, and he struggles with left-handed bats. Rick Porcello, that is. And if you're looking at DJ Stewart, splits the season versus righties. He's got a very 3.30 ISO and a 28% walk rate. The other numbers aren't too pretty, but there's some decent pop here, and he's literally free. So he's certainly viable here, and Porcello is a guy that's just not a very good pitcher these days. So don't mind DJ Stewart for the bare minimum, but that's going to be it for the video, guys. I hope it was helpful. If it was, make sure you leave a like. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. really helps me out. really do appreciate it. Got my NFL first look video up for week one. If you want to watch that, I'll have my NASCAR video out within the next couple of days. Now I'll be... Keep popping out the MLB videos, so a lot to look forward to. I'll probably do a core plays NFL video later on in the week. And, yeah, it's about pretty much it. So I'll see you guys in the next video, and I hope you guys enjoy your Wednesday. Yes, Wednesday.